report into the cloud. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. This is the um, book group for the Mirabella Library, and uh, our book is The Piano Tuner, and it was uh, suggested by Maggie. Okay. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Uh, today, our book to be discussed is The Piano Tuner by Danielle Mason. This is a story on piano making, repairing, tuning it, along with a lot of traveling through eastern regions of Asia. These surreal moments are grounded on the real history and politics of the 19th century British dominated Burma when in 1880 Britain was consolidating their Maggie, importance. I, I have a request for Maggie. Can you lift your head up? Your mouth I is not hear, coming. I can hear you at all, Anne. Yeah, and we need I to. I cannot hear you. And oh, I can't yes. hear you, Anna. We we need to see your mouth, please. That's better I now. Hear you, Anne. Okay, better. No problem. I don't know. Yeah, we need uh, Maggie. We need your your head up so we can uh, watch your mouth while you're talking. Okay. Better. Yeah. But better. Here we okay. are. Yeah. The threat to British rule of Franco-Burmese cooperation was compounded by local insurgency in the Shan states. The ties until the 16th century had ruled much of Burma. The Limbing Confederacy was savagely put down in 1887 and the bandit prince was captured and shot. On this dramatic material, Mason has written an imaginary story that interweaves invented characters and historical figures, political analysis, great poetic descriptions, taking us along rivers, jungles for pages and pages. Edgar Drake, a piano tuner living in London with his wife, Catherine, is summoned by the war office and really asked, almost demanding that he travels to the village of my Luin to tune an error piano <clears throat> owned by a surgeon, Major Anthony Carroll. Drake is offered a pay equivalent of one year for a three month service. Edgar feels somewhat confined and restless in his own life. So after talking to Catherine, his wife, he decides to go. Takes his tools and some replacement parts for the type of the piano. So on November 26, 1886, he starts his trip from London to Marseille, to Alessandria, to finally the village of Mailwin on the banks of the Salwin River. It's a bamboo fort clinging to the side of the mountain, surrounded by forests, pages and pages of traveling along jungles, mountains, lakes, etc., etc. Burma is today what we call Myanmar. Arriving in Mailwin, he is taken to his quarters and meets mysterious uh, King Mayo, she speaks English and seems to become his helper in a way later a little bit more. He later meets Sergeant Major Anthony Carroll, <coughs> owner of the Error Piano, shows him the piano, which of course, due to the humid climate of the area, is uh, very much out of tune. Mr. Carroll is not too demanding, let's take move at his own page and also ask him to accompany him in some trips where he meets some of the natives' uh, governors. Carroll is also a knowledgeable doctor specializing in malaria, diarrhea, and rabies, common diseases on that part of the world. People in England get vaccinated for those maladies, but the medicines are not sent over there. After the error is tuned, and a lot of explanations given after the steps of the tuning. <coughs> the doctor wants to hear a concert. Edgar says he's not really a pianist, but a tuner, but he does play uh, music for him. Anthony Carroll lives for days at a time. Edgar doesn't know to where. He's developing some feeling for King Mario, although he doesn't to admit it to himself. The longer he stays, the more his life becomes interwoven with the local communities and, and of course, with Mr. Carroll and King Mayo, to the point of not missing England that much 
anymore. Carroll's authority and knowledge of all <coughs> and knowledge of the country are set against the war office, simplifying versions on Anglo Burmese politics. He seems to have going native working for them rather than the British. Drake becomes implicated because he has accompanied Carroll in several trips and also met some of the native rebels and so he stood <coughs> and the piano itself become victims of the war of the empire. The ending is sort of puzzling. A lot of descriptions, the paranoia of the British soldiers led to a terrible tragedy that we, the reader, don't quite understand the terrible reason that takes Edgar's life. Mason has the ability to transport us to unknown and alluring foreign countries. I love to travel. That is what this book uh, was <coughs> special to be, as if I could in my mind travel through the last scenery and amb ambience. <coughs> it's a very distant and unknown to me country. I understand that the descriptions are very lengthy and Edgar is a bit und uh, undefined. What do you ladies think of the book? Well, I really like the book. You like the book? Good. I like the descriptions. I like the attention to detail. Um, I really liked um, when it, when it was say when you said Edgar was a little undefined. He was kind of defined in that he was like an introvert. Yeah. And he was really interested only in his piano tuning. Yeah. He loved music but he didn't associate well with others. But while he was on the ship, he learned to play cards with the, the crew and other passengers. And I think he started coming out of his, I don't know, his shyness maybe. Um, and he certainly did well when he was at um, Dr. Carroll's place, yeah. talking to the people and, and coming out kind of another side of him came out with, um, what was her name, Mei Lin? No, Ken Mayo. Yeah. Um, I think I I told um, Daylene at one point, I like this book because it wasn't a dysfunctional family book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sick of those on the market. I could scream. Um, I... I liked, what do I say? I liked the description of the people that he met. Yeah. And um, I was really interested though. Did you all get to the end of the book? I did. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I hope I don't spoil it for you. <laughs> um, Go ahead because I, I have the explanation. <laughs> I kind of thought it was interesting in the British paranoia how they felt that Dr. Carroll was undermining their political reign in Burma or Myanmar at that time, and how they blamed it on the French and the Russians. And I thought, don't those Russians ever get out of other people's business? <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was their paranoia and possibly correct thinking didn't you get a hint early on about that box of music that it was in code? Yeah. Did you have yeah. that? I didn't. I, I didn't. did. I thought he's got something in there because that box of music was too, too priceless. Uh -huh. And they did find out that it was full of code. Mm -hmm. And it was probably Dr. Carroll's way of communicating with whoever, the Russians, the French, right. the French were moving in at that time because they were going after the rubber trees for latex. And so I don't know. Um, I think that's what got him killed though, is he ran. And don't we know in today's news, you don't ever run when somebody's telling you to stop and they're in yeah. an authority. Yeah. <laughs> you don't run. <laughs> And I think that that's why they shot him, is that he yes. he just kept going and wouldn't look back. So they thought he was a, a spy also. Um, they thought because he went 
with Dr. Carroll to the <laughs> other provinces um, to meet with the other lords um, that they were plotting something and he was going along with Carol. Mm -hmm. I don't think he knew what was going on. I really don't. I don't either. Agree. Uh, uh, not politically. I, I just don't think he knew. No. But he felt <clears throat> through the, the culture at that time, you really didn't say no to things. And he was invited to go on these trips like that hunting trip when actually they were going out bird watching. And um, oh, that other one up to see the, what was it the bandits or something? I think he just felt like he couldn't turn Carol's request down, so he went. But I don't think he got in on the political stuff. I don't. But think it, that's why I like the book. <laughs> you I asked. Don't, I don't think he got in on the political stuff either. But I think the reason he went on the expeditions with. You know, the ones you two you mentioned is because he was coming out of his shyness. It was it was a whole new world for him, <clears throat> as was the the possible girlfriend whole new world or one night stand or whatever you want to call it, which didn't happen. But um, I just never knew if Carol really was a spy or not. I, I just couldn't tell. And, and I could I see why he was shot because he looked obviously they thought he was going to undo some of their doings and well it all kind of made sense because um dr carroll was always remember he was always leaving and nobody mm -hmm. knew where he went and they just said oh he's a very important man but he you know he's going to be gone for a couple days or whatever and then when he took um edgar with him for this meeting with the Lord, she sort of explained to Edgar, do you know that by coming with me, you're actually complicit to what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And Edgar was very upset about that. And yeah, that's right. insistent upon the fact that, you know, he was in the queen's service and he was there to serve the queen. Right. And he was really angry. And then after the meeting, when Dr. Carroll told him, oh, they had this peace treaty thing and they all agreed to it and everything, then Edgar didn't see, say anything about it anymore. You know, they were all sort of like hiding things from each other. Do you really think that Dr. Carroll was able to bring peace to the area through his music and medicine? And there was something else, peace talks or something, uh, instead of fighting. Do you think that music and why that piano was so important that I don't know. Did he play it? He did play it, right? Yeah. No. 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 He didn't. No. Did he know how to play the piano, or what? That just. No. no, Dr. Carroll. Did he play? He must have. He said he did. Yeah. He did. Okay. I don't. Doctor Carroll. To me, I think Maggie asked a question. Which of the characters um, did you find the most interesting? Um, I simply didn't find any of them interesting enough. But Dr. Carroll was in this man, this author's mind, more of a Bond villain-esque kind of person. Somebody that was slightly possibly deranged, um, lived in an isolated world of his own kingdom, his own making, uh, out of touch with reality. And, it, it, it strikes me as an early Sean Connery Bond kind of, of, of character. Um, I don't know how villainous he was, but that's how he struck me. Um, he, he seemed to be the only one with a lot of backbone, of good or bad, evil or not, I don't know. But um, he was definitely uh, a king in his own world. That's how I visualized him. I think the crown kind of made him like that because in, in all of his previous, um, oh dear, what do you call it when you're assigned somewhere? Postings. Yes, thank you. He was always very successful and he never heard anything but praise. So that could have made him kind of an egotistical, big headed person, you know? He didn't have any failures along his career. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I think that he and both Dr. Carroll and Edward were in a lot of ways similar, at least at first. And I think that's what Edward connected with. He both saw them as in service to the queen, but not in a military way. And the folks in the military who were so, it seemed that they were very, there were sides drawn about Dr. Carroll. Some people thought he really was doing good things and others had really no use for him because they didn't trust what he was doing. And I may, perhaps I'm too much of an optimist, but I really felt he was being successful by doing things with music because it, it cuts across the, the most common bond of all, which is humanity. He was there presenting pleasant, beautiful things. He was there as a doctor and he was helping families and children. And I think that's the biggest bridge. But those who were more military minded really didn't see any use for that or discounted it because it made them call into question what they were all about. And there was a part at the beginning of the book that um, really resonated with me is that he made this connection. He saw himself a lot like Dr. Carroll and this is before he met him. So that evolved, but mm -hmm. he said both of them understood that there was a very big difference between being needed and being accepted. Like he was needed to come in to a lot of very high society places and tune pianos or fix pianos. And so he basically hobnobbed with a lot of these folks, but it didn't really mean that he was part of them. <coughs> and I thought that was interesting. And I thought that was a connection that he saw with um, Dr. Carroll too. And I also want to thank Maggie for selecting this book because I will promise you this, I would never have read I would never have selected histor a historical novel to read on my own. So thank you for stretching me. I appreciate it. Maggie. <laughs> That's really being in a book club. You do read things that you never ever would have picked up. You have never that. heard of them. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you either love them or like them or, or <laughs> don't like them. But most of the time, you like them. It's always something new. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. Edward, uh, at one point in the book, I think midway, he defined his life, quote, by making order, others can create beauty. That's how he saw himself in life, according to the author. Uh, he wasn't uh, in himself a creator of beauty. He allowed others to do it. It was his job to facilitate. And that seemed to be uh, his, his role in life. Yeah, I, I think so. I just um, want to throw something in. I found almost all of the characters to be interesting. Um, they were very different from people that I run into every day. Um, all of them were, including like the boys that guided uh, Edward on his journeys through the jungle. Um, very, they were very conscientious about what they were doing. Um, protecting him, and uh, uh, and the woman was certainly an interesting character, and I I kind of agree with um, with Chris. I I don't think there was anything sinister about Carol, Doctor Carol. Um, his explanation for the music that it was the Shan music written down, which was totally unfamiliar to uh, the Brits and anybody from the East, the European countries. And it would look like it, uh, it, it would look like code, but it, it was just a totally different kind of music. And um, I don't think we appreciate enough how different Asian music can be from what we're used to. But I just, I found, I found almost all of the book interesting. I, where I struggled was with the sections that went on and on with Burmese language and place names. And that to me could have been trimmed way back. Um, I wasn't trying to learn the Burmese language and maybe I should have been. Uh -huh. But um, overall, I really enjoyed the book. Thank you, Maggie. Did any of you read it on a Kindle? No. Well, I read it on, uh, no, I read it on the hard cup. Hard okay. Book. I read it on Kindle. 
Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the publisher. The publisher is called Picador, a, a respected publisher. The Kindle version was so littered with errors and run on sentences and no um, quotation marks, no periods, improper capitalization. It was um, really. It was a. It was an absolute mess. I started. Uh, I started highlighting. I got so frustrated to show you guys. And of course, I realized my Kindle's right here, and I can't show you guys. But it was um, a a mess, an absolute mess of a of a production. Yeah. Wow. I thought there was too bad. I didn't know that would happen in yeah. any book. Yeah. I yeah. think that was I think that was the way the author was telling the story in places is the way it seemed to me, where um, there would be some very intense dialogue between Edward and somebody else, and they would go, be going back and forth. And the way conversations can do when people's emotions are high, um, practically tripping over each other's words. And it would have been more clear if that had been marked off with quotes but I was able to decipher it. It was this person and this person um, just all very wound up in the conversation they were having. Yeah, That's it seemed to be something he did deliberately in some areas where he just represented these conversations just rambling and with no punctuation, no right. periods, no way for you to know who is speaking. So you were kind of left on your own there. And I as a reader, wasn't I couldn't understand why an author would do that. I don't know what the effect was he was going for other than confusion. Oh, wow. So maybe it wasn't your Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> no. I got a little bit lost when um, Edgar would go on his walks and then he would start talking about his thoughts or feelings or whatever. And <clears throat> sometimes it would go on and on and on and I would I would lose track of if he was dreaming or those things were really happening to him or, you know, I would, he, it would kind of, that's what kind of threw me off a few times because it yeah. went off a lot by himself and would take these really long walks. Yeah. I'm kind of impressed with the author himself. Uh, he, you know, he's a doctor now and he does research and, uh, he started this book when he was. Oh, and he wrote it in 26. Pardon me. He wrote it when he was 26. Yes. And he, he started it when he was in a foreign country, but I don't think it was there. I don't quite remember where it was, but he put it together while he was doing, it wasn't the Peace Corps, but say a mission a year's mission out of the country and and then he came back to med school and i i think that's a lot going on in your life to be able to to write a book and and he's doing quite a bit of research and i do not remember what field it is but he's a psychiatrist i think oh, he's he really has a, he has a ba in biology yeah. And then he went on to become a psychiatrist at Stanford Hospital. Yeah. And he also teaches literature at Stanford University. That was it. So he's still doing both. I, I, I think oh. he's a pretty remarkable person. Uh, yeah. I can, I can, and did not, it, did any of you think it kind of reminded you of Out of Africa, the movie? Well, it was a book too. Kind of did me. Anyway, not the premise, but just, you know, you're in a different place and you're meeting different people and uh, don't really know what's going on with the different people. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. very good reading. It reminds there is a, a very good video on YouTube about the development of the Erod piano. And this young man is in a museum and he shows all of the harps that um, Erod uh, developed and made over the years. He had to leave France. He was from Germany, but he went to France to study, but then the revolution started and he went to England and he made these harps. And eventually he went back to France and that's where all of the pianos come from. 
they are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous pieces of instrument, I should call them. I was going to say piece of furniture, but they're not. They're instruments. <laughs> it, would, it would be nice for this gentleman who has such an interest in pianos if he had written a, a, another book, uh, which I don't believe he has, uh, about the the wonderful musicians that 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 played on his pianos. Um, right. Beethoven, Chopin, Haydn, Liszt, Mendelssohn, Wagner, Verdi. Um, wow. That's where the story would be. To, I mean, to me, that's where the story is. Um, but uh, anyway, right. I was looking it up. There are about a thousand still left in the UK. And of them, 40% are grand pianos, the rest are uprights. Um, the grands are valued, the uprights not obviously so much, but um, that I think that would have been a wonderful second story. It He's written two other books, one in 2007 called The Far Country, and then The Winter Soldier in 2018. But Ooh. I don't know what they're about. But okay. he has written two other books. Okay. Yeah, I think studying the musicians that use that piano would be very interesting. Yeah. Do you find any story around the book, a different story that kind of impress you or sort of a different kind? Because I had one, it was on page 290 and it says, uh, actually, <coughs> this is not the story, maybe just the belief. The Burmese said that the life of a man lies in a spirit that is like a moth. The spirit stays in his body and a man cannot live without it. The Burmese also say that the lip baya is the reason for dreams. When a man sleeps, the lip baya flies from his mouth and goes around here and there and sees things in his journey, and these are our dreams. The lip baya must always return to a man by the morning. This is why the Burmese don't want to wake sleeping people, perhaps the lead buyer is very far away and it cannot return fast enough. And then if the lead buyer is lost or if his journey is caught and eaten by an uh, evil spirit, then this man is his final sleep. Because if, the buy, if the, this little bug doesn't go back and you cannot wake up because it's the reason. I thought that was kind of an odd story. Mm -hmm. And it's just in page, page 290 in there. And I thought, well, I thought maybe you picked up something else. So uh, what do you like best, the descriptions or the characters or you ever considered visiting the Far East over there? No, none of you did that. I'm not traveling. <laughs> oh, Maggie, Maggie. You asked about traveling, yeah. if any of us wanted to travel. Well, it's not exactly um, the Middle East, but I always wanted to see Japan. On Japan? Japan. My um, uncle married a Japanese woman during the uh, Korean War when he was stationed over there. And she passed away a couple years ago. He brought her back here, and her name was Tamayo. And she was just the sweetest thing. And I just always wanted to go to Japan. <laughs> I have a couple of her dolls. She had a doll collection, these beautiful dolls with their little kimonos on. And so were you, ever, were you ever in Japan? Did you ever go in, in Japan? No, I would love to though. Oh. I, I lived there, I lived in Tokyo for three years. My daughter, our daughter was born in Tokyo. Ah. Tokyo? My mother, my mother traveled to Burma in nine in the nineteen eighties. Um, yeah, uh, it was open then. It was a window, and I wish I could remember so many of her descriptions. But I think at the end of her life, that was the trip of her life. Oh. She traveled. She traveled. I would not say extensively, but certainly was very well traveled. But I think that was the trip of her life. Yeah. Hmm. Isn't it harder to get into Myanmar now than it was years ago? 
don't you since they're mainly muslim right yeah, yeah. and i i think it's more difficult to cross the border as a tourist yes i i think it would be um i mean very it very difficult but there have been windows during the history of the country where they were open to tourism and that my, as far as my mother that was a window she was able to go in, into without a lot of restrictions by the way um and into china as well but you know times were different wouldn't you like to say irrawaddy river i love that word irrawaddy yeah <laughs> I think that the, the, the um, Myanmar people are mostly Buddhist, is what I remember reading. And the people, the Rohingya that they're persecuting are Muslim. Oh, okay. That's where the Muslim comes I in. I cannot hear Anne at all when she speaks. I don't know why. All Me? of you come up fine, but Anne Green, I don't hear her at all. Oh. You don't, you don't hear me? And no, I don't, I don't hear that green. No, I, I see the mouth moving, but I, I, I can't hear anything from her. And all of you are fine, but not her. I don't know why. I'm not muted. But if we could just move her over a couple, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't work that way, does it? Oh. <laughs> I wanted to throw in one more thing that I particularly enjoyed when. Edgar was tuning the P Major Carroll's piano. He was so totally absorbed in the process of uh -huh. tuning. He lost track of day and night. And uh, well, I think night he recognized, but as the day w went by, he, he had lost track of the hours. And that kind of um, deep concentration to me is something very beautiful. I think that's a gift. I think that many people don't have that gift of being able to concentrate that hard. And I think, I thought that was very beautiful the way they described it. It is. I like that too. Yes, yeah. me too. Yeah. I was nervous about one thing. I knew there was going to be a snake scene. <laughs> it really made me nervous. When is it coming? <laughs> How would you think he felt when he cut the ropes on the raft that held the piano and he oh, was yeah. there and he watched it go on down the river? Did you ever think you wonder where in the heck the piano ever ended up? Yeah. Did it end up in the Delta? Where yeah. did it go? Yeah. I thought it was interesting that when they were interrogating him, that they had all of his letters and they never sent any of his letters to his wife. Right? Yeah. They didn't? No. Oh, that's awful. I missed that. Oh, they, when they were interrogating him, they said they had never sent his letters. And I was, and I thought, well, oh. um, his wife never knew whatever the word, word. Because, and never got his letters. That's, that's awesome. Sick. It would have been fun for me if part of the book had been nonfiction, if part of the book had been based in a reality of, of, of the characters um, rather than just in his mind. Uh, I, I think I would have enjoyed the journey more knowing there was partly truth in there um, rather than just his descriptions. Um, I think he addresses that in the back of the book a lot of it is nonfiction. Yeah. Um, his characters are strictly fiction. Yeah. But what did he say about that? They also said Napoleon played on an error and Beethoven played on an error for seven years. So they both own errors. Yeah, it, he says, nevertheless, I've attempted to place my story within a true historical context, a task facilitated by the fact that the history and characters of the Shan Revolt are more colorful than any imagination can conjure. All historical briefs in the story from the Burmese history to the Erard Priano contain true information. The pacification of the Shan states represented a critical 
period in British imperial expansion. I read that. And then he goes on to say what are other things that he cited as history. Um, there's quite a bit. He did quite a bit of research for that, even mm -hmm. though he did spend time on the Thai, um, uh, Burmese or Myanmar, I don't know what to call it nowadays, mm -hmm. Myanmar border studying malaria. Do, do, do you think the author had any other option other than having him die at the end? I don't know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Because I only from a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then if he had if he had lived, he might have been part of some, I don't know, effort to find out if indeed Dr. Carroll was a spy or if he was wrongly accused of that because he just used unorthodox methods, that might've been interesting to know. Or if he, came, if he returned home and actually uh, had that relationship with his wife that he apparently didn't have in person, but he had fictitionally while he was away and carried with him the manhood that he acquired while he was gone. That, yeah. that would have worked for me. Me you too. Know, rather yeah. than just yes. having him away. Yeah. They left you hanging because you don't know if they ever knew what happened to him or, you know, <laughs> it just... That was very sad, I thought. Yeah, it was kind of... Um, um, it was. I think I've watched too many masterpiece things. <laughs> and so I wanted, I wanted there to be like a happy end. <laughs> I wanted him to go back to England and reunite with his wife and... Um, yeah. You know, and then have this wonderful life with her. And I felt bad for her. Yeah. She encouraged him to go and thought it would be such a good thing, but she really, you know, didn't want him to go. I mean, she was really upset that he was leaving, but yet she didn't yeah. try to make him stay. And being she never got his letters. And she never got any letters. Yeah. I thought that yeah. was very sad. Yeah. Very sad. sad ending. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want to go back to England. He wanted to stay there, I guess. Right. That's, that's kind of blended in with the surroundings. And I guess he felt more comfortable on the far east than he did in, uh, in his Britain, you know. So. Thank you, Maggie, for that book. That was something that, you know, we would never have read without you. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, I came you. Across, you know, I came across, of course, at the store, and then I thought, well, let us see. So I started reading, and then I thought, well, it's going too long. But then, you know, I thought, well, it was something different, and we talk about, you know, the Far East and several different uh, customs and and surroundings, and I thought, well, maybe they would like it like I did. I did not. Well, let's do that. <laughs> so okay. I'm glad that you most of it was a good know, choice. Good choice. Yes, good. Thank you. Thank you. Now you have to pick up the next ones for next year, but you know you have a lot of nice suggestions. Okay. Going to, going to the suggestions, I have a tally, mm -hmm. and um, the ones that want to oh, what happened? <laughs> what happened to Lynn? She left. Yeah. Uh, we have. Um, Three people want to read your own book. Um, and three people want to pick 12 books. And one person wants to pick 10 books. So we've got <laughs> a little bit of um, uh, decision there to make. Um, I have a question about for the people who want to read their own book. I, I'm not sure I'm clear. Do you mean that it would be then like a lecture from that person and that nobody else would have read it and um, the rest of the people would decide afterwards? So would there be any discussion in, in that meeting? Uh, go, go, no. go on, Daylene, sorry. Go ahead, Leslie. Uh, th there would be lim more limited discussion if nobody had read it. But the difference <laughs> is that if, if it was presented um, like we're trying to sell that we're, we're, we presented 
as though the yeah. book really mattered, really mattered. Not just, oh, I wish I had, I'm glad that I went down this path to read this book, otherwise I wouldn't have read it. But a, a, a direct um, choosing of one book that really stands out and says, this is what I want to read, this is what I want to share, this is what works. And um, I, I've, I've talked to other people in various other clubs because um, not everybody has the same interest. Anne Hickey mentioned um, she was a bit tired of um, uh, this this family. family. families. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just done with them. Uh, 12 year olds that, that have problems, I, I'm done with them. <laughs> um, so it was just, it was a different way of selecting, that's all. And no, there wouldn't be as much discussion, but the person that presented <laughs> could, could actually dig a bit deeper, not just read the storyline, but dig a, dip, a bit deeper, tell you about the characters, tell you about who's good, who's bad, who, you know, what worked, what didn't. And, and then maybe decide whether you want to put out 12 bucks at Amazon or, you know, put on the list at the, at the library. Um, and it, it just is an alternative way. That's all. Right. No, there wouldn't be nearly as much discussion. Yeah, I, 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 I would like to speak in favor of the way we've been um, conducting our business. I really love the discussions that we have. Look at this afternoon. It's been fascinating. And Maggie had prepared and she had things she read and Anne Hickey was very prepared also. But we got input from everybody about insights about the book. And I love hearing all of our voices. And to me, that's, that, that's to me is what book club is about. Um, okay, so I, I don't wanna lose that. Lynn, go ahead on your- Well, I was just gonna say that I, when I thought about, you know, everybody choose their own book, it was only under the intent that, you know, we all have different likes there's yeah you know, we all have different styles of writing that we like we all have different genres that we like and it was just a way of bringing more books to the book club to explore and the person who was going to be presenting the book i know roberta said sometimes they're bad books well if you start a book and you don't think it's worth the effort of the club start another one yeah but um, usually you know we don't get to read there's so many wonderful books out there and so many different types of books out there we don't get to do that and i just thought of it as a way of introducing more books in and that this to me the discussion would be uh in the presenters not talking all the time but giving out some way for the group to have a discussion about certain points like if there was a character development well you know this is what we saw of characters. What do you think about character development? Or if it was plot line, or if, you know, I, I don't know, it would, it would depend on the book. Uh, I still thought there could be very rich discussion going, um, particularly if you knew the author. Yeah. Uh, and also your books if, by that author or uh, something of that nature. And to me, I would, I would develop something and send it out and say that this is what I'm going to be discussing. Do you know anything more about this author or anybody? Um, it was just another approach, Anne. It wasn't, you know, to not exclude everybody. It was just to kind of create a different way of. And and Lynn, there's another. Um, as 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 they say, there's only five plot lines in in fiction books, and each. Um, I think somebody asked, "Was this? Did this remind us of Out of Africa?" Each book can remind you of something else. You bring in your history of your reading and say, it reminded me of this. This character was similar to this character I read in back in so-and-so. It's pulling out all these threads that are inside of our head. I, I don't know. It, it sounds... I, I like um, Leslie and Lynn's idea also of reading a book. There's so many books that I have <laughs> that I need to read and I would like to read. And um, I, and also it might be a book that two or three of you have already read. So there you would have a discussion. Right. Yeah. Or if not, I you, do, you know I the do authors. Like the I do like the idea of each person um, presenting the book that they suggested and to suggest what you're saying about pick something that you either love or you really want to read for some good solid reasons. And I, I like that kind of ownership <laughs> of the books each month. Um, enough. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't, 
I think I've read some fantastic books because there are choices I never probably would have made. Right. But I've been introduced to so many wonderful books since I joined this club and, and the discussions and, and just learning so much uh, about your experiences with reading. <laughs> So to me, either way, I was just in my head, I was just thinking about there's so many books out there to read. And I was just kind of looking at, oh, if we all brought something new to the table, it might be uh, a way to expand. So many books and so little time. <laughs> yeah. well, and my eyes are getting older by the minute. So <laughs> maybe there's a way we can combine doing <laughs> what we've been doing. And, you know, we've been taking one month where we've been just talking about different books we've read uh, rather than discussing, you know, one particular book. Maybe there's a way that we could um, maybe take two or three months or something, but maybe you're split it up somehow so that we're still reading. I'm with Anne. I love the discussion. I really like to be reading the same book that everybody else is reading. And I miss it when I read a book on my own. I miss having somebody to talk to about the book because I only have one, one friend, one dear friend who is a reader like I am, you know? I mean, she knew, she knew about this book. As soon as I, I told her the name, she said, oh, that's an old one, you know? And she's in a couple different book clubs, but most of my friends, as hard as I try to encourage them to read, I'm always buying them books. I'm always loaning them books. Oh, I think you'd really like this one. Um, they're just not yeah. like me. So I, I love to have somebody that I can talk with about the book, but there's, but I also love to, I, in between reading the books that we read, I read other books as well. And it would be nice to be able to hear what everybody else is reading and find out about those books too. So I'm thinking maybe we could combine the two you know, how, how could we combine that? Um, maybe we could choose. I don't know. The only way we we'd have to choose fewer books that we all read, you know, instead of doing 10 or 12, I don't know, five or six or whatever. And then the rest of the time we would have maybe two or three people certain months, maybe do an every other month kind of thing or something. I don't know. I haven't worked out the logistics in my head. I just thought of thought about it right now because everybody's we're all kind of talking about different things so you know like one month we we all read a book together the next month we have two people that talk about a book they've read or, or something and then the next month we all read a book together something like that I don't know just yeah. an idea yeah that's a good idea Marsha you were going to say something yeah I want to say that I was the oddball that only wanted to do 10 books because I, you know, I belong to another book club as some of the rest of you do, but I also like to read other books on those two months that I don't have an assignment, so to speak. <laughs> and the other thing, um, uh, what, what would happen if January and February uh, we started off with the new system, the new suggestion, and see how it goes to, to people that are interest, very interested in sharing some great book they've read and would like to do a presentation like that. See how it goes. And then, or, or would that be a put down for those people if we said, no, I don't like it, mm -hmm. um, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just, um, I don't know. I, I, you know, we're all so free to do whatever way we want to present a book. And it's been a, a hallmark of this group, I think. I mean, mm -hmm. you might say, well, I'm not going to read this. However, <laughs> I will show up. <laughs> but, you know, nobody really puts the other person down for how well they do or not do. And I think we need to keep that as a going item, but I'm certainly worth tr worth having someone try it and all of us try it, but um, whether it's uh, Kathy Cole's uh, system or Anne's system or 
Leslie Ann's system or whoever's system, but uh, 10 books is enough for me for one book club. And that's okay if it's 12, but that I was the one who said 10, I thought 10 was. So in that respect, I guess I was saying, I like the old format. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I agree. But well, I, I don't I don't have a problem with any format. I was just trying to come up with something new because yeah. our lives have just become sure. so contained. I was just trying to think outside the box, but um, I what whatever the group would like is fine because I will still put up the book that I would probably want to share individually. Sure. And, you know. Right. Think we all would, you know, yeah. really. I think we all will put up a book we want to share. I think we do. Well, I think we do also, yes. Then that's, you know, that's the bottom line. We still um, um, still have the books, uh, but also have a, a time period for somebody to tell about a new book that they've read. <clears throat> Will that work? Mm -hmm. Oh, just a thought. I'm thinking about over this past year and let's say last year, uh, when the book list comes out and we do the presentation in January, the presentation is a very clipped um, uh, little um, short definition of the book and it doesn't really give you all of the uh, of the, the the insight you have to go online to see if you want to read it and that's what I do um and I know I know very much Ann Graham that you have said that the job of being in a book club is to read the books that's your commitment I on the other hand if I see a book of which I am not going to be interested in I'm not going to read it because my time gets to be chosen by what I want to read. And um, so I'm not wanting to let you down, Ann Grimm, because you drilled that into me. But I'm afraid and I'm afraid for the future that I might not be there anymore because there's certain books of, of types of books I, like adolescent, and, you know, so, that I don't really choose to read anymore. So maybe if anybody else out is out there like me that, that makes some sort of judgment decision saying, this isn't really my, this is not really what I want to read. So I'm going to suggest I'll pass on that book. I'm right or wrong. I might be wrong, but I'm going to pass on that book and I'm going to present my own book when it's time. Um, and, 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 Believe me, when I have passed on books and sat here in this group, mostly around the library, because that's where everything happened. I mean, it, it was just great. But I have missed books that I didn't read. And I chose to read once I heard the discussion. There were many books that I didn't read that I was glad I didn't read. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, and, and so maybe if somebody's upfront enough like, and, and says, you know, I, I, we're gonna pick 10 books, but I'm gonna pass on one of them and I'm gonna present my own book for that month. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Well, you know, instinctively, it, it just isn't the one you wanna do and spend the time on. And so you, you, you raise your hand and say, I got a, a free month. I'm, I'm not reading that book, but I can do another book. But what? How do you get, if you're going to skip a book because you don't like it, what about the other people that have read that book? Oh, yeah. How, I mean, when would the, you present the one you wanted then? How would we have the discussion on that one? I'm not quite sure, but maybe. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just want to find a way to stay in this group. Um, uh, It's Maybe tough. at the end of the year, you could say, I skipped May's book because I didn't like it, but here we are. Well, you know, do we, do we want to maybe take, uh, there will only be books off the New York Times bestseller list, or there will only be certain books, you know, certain categories or something. Um, 
I, I don't know. So we get the, the latest that are out there. We get the newest, uh, doesn't have to be the newest. We've, we've read books that, you know, mm. are classics. Um, but it just seems like there, to me, it's, it's mind boggling how many books are out there. And there's yeah. so many that I would like to read and would love to read. And I'm exhausted thinking about them. There's so many of them, but you know, yeah. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I do know I have my favorite authors. I have my favorite genre, but I also like to go outside the box. I mean, so many books that have come to us and been introduced to us, uh, I would probably have not chosen because there's so many others. Yeah. Right. That you know, that's yeah. the point. If I could pick, piggyback on your idea, Lynn, I think it's good for us to present a book that we really liked and it's maybe one that we've not all read and kind of stay away from the bestseller list because we all get a chance to read bestsellers. But maybe there's a hidden treasure like this piano tuner. You know, that wasn't on a bestseller list, but we enjoyed it. And if we can present to the group another book that maybe wasn't a bestseller, or but don't make was. it read when the crawdads sing again. Oh, <laughs> what was I hated that book. <laughs> but that's the problem with bestsellers because oftentimes, those bestsellers are simply hyped up books to make us buy them, i.e., i.e., for me, The Dutch House. I picked it Yes. I figured you guys would like it, but it did nothing for me. Um, and, and so I, you know, I, when I look at the go to Goodreads <laughs> and look at what people put out there as five star books, most books are like three and a half stars, but the five stars are the ones that you, Gosh, you just would like to grab them if you can, you know? You know, our our book club was, this book club was, got it started on 2002. That was the first year, so it has been going on for 18 years. Wow. Because Linda, uh, she passed away already. Uh, the, the library, she says, well, do you have a book club? No, there is not a book club. Would you like to start one? And Linda and I said, okay, let us start one. So I think that was about May of 2002. And it has been going, you know, all these years to date, until today. So that, I guess, and I think <clears throat> people kind of, you know, they depend on somebody, you know, suggesting some books and, of course, some we might like it or some we might not, but you know, you publish the, the list and we do a vote, you know, if anybody wants to suggest more than one or two and then, you know, pass it and some pass the test and some do not, I don't know, you can eliminate, but you know, I think that probably if everybody suggests one, I think it's the best way to go. I guess, I don't know, that is my feeling about it. But. Because, you know, like I say, if it has been going on for 18 years, apparently there is some merit to the, to the, uh, to the system. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You're right. But exactly. anyway, whatever you decide is fine with me. Too, well, how so. many of us are there? Are there 12, Daylene? Um, yes, there's tw uh, 12. So if we, if we go by the, the original intent of the, of the book club, which is 10 books, yeah. we'd have, 12 suggestions, you know, um, and that's, we'd have to vote then. On oh, it. Throw, them out of a hat. throw them out of a hat. We wouldn't have to throw vote. them out of a hat. With the pandemic, voting gets awfully complicated. Okay, so I'm sorry. I think Marsh is wrestling on how to do it. Okay. Well, I, I like drawing out of the hat because that, you know, hey, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, one suggestion from each person and then draw them out of a hat. Okay. Was Do we send Daylene then the suggestion and she has mm -hmm. the hat? Is that what? how we'll do it? If, we if send I, our suggestions to Daylene and then she cuts them up and puts them in a hat and then Daylene can okay. pull them or somebody. Why don't, why don't we just do two people, somebody with Daylene just so there's no question of fraud. Uh, 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 <laughs> I can come over daily. Uh, not, 
No, we no. have observers. We'll have observers in the room. Yes. Yeah, we have to have two <laughs> observers in the background. <laughs> One from each party. Right. Okay. Right. Painting near Daylene's house, right? Okay. I, I, I have a I have a question though. Um if if it isn't a favorite book that we have already read, but it's something we'd like to read and we haven't either completely read it or you know done it the justice of you know sure. reading the whole thing. Is that is that allowable? Because we were saying in the past, yeah. you would have to have read the book. Uh, I would rather do that than have having read it if we want to read something. Right. So if, if it's something we really would like to read and that we'd like to have the whole group, then we could do it without having had the the preemptive read on it. Because there's so many books, I can't go through every book to read. Right. Actually. Yeah. I tried that one year and I almost killed myself trying to read through five books to suggest one for the book club. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. I'm on a, a, a Facebook page with a lot of authors and um, the number of authors that read 360, they, they make their own limit. 365 books a year is amazing. Uh, now they just swallow them like pills because Basically, they, you know, what was the last one like? I don't really remember, but they just go through them one at a time, at a time, at a time, a book a day. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. I don't either. I don't have that. And have a life. So, <laughs> let me ask you, let me ask you this. I was given uh, this book uh, by a friend of mine. It's, it was a birthday gift. Does anybody know this book or know this author? I do. I know Alice Hoffman. I've read some of her books. Do you? Okay. Yeah, what's the title? I don't I know. The book. Magic Lessons. I've heard of it. I've read okay. Alice Hoffman. It was just, it was listed in um, one of the magazines just recently, a respected magazine. And I have no knowledge of it. I wondered if anybody else did. I don't know whether I'll read it or not, but um does no, anybody say thumbs up or not? No. Go for I, it. I, like the, oh. I read. I don't remember the name of it. It was years ago, but I. Oh, well, I this, is the one. Her books. this is the I have book. read that one. Okay, now. Was she a good writer, Kathy? Or? Yeah, Who's she's it? a well known author. Well respected. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty well known. Her stuff sells at the bookstore because I price it, so I see it going out. Okay. But I've never read her, so I don't know. Okay. I, I have one other question. I know we have to get back to it, but does anybody in this group do audio books? I do. What, what do you pay for them, Ann? Do you pay I through, go through? I go through Chirp, and they're anything from 90, 99 cents to the most expensive I've seen is $4.99. Now you don't they're have to not do off the best. They're not off the bestseller list, but they're audio books, and no monthly contract. Sure. And chirp, C H I R P, and you read it through their app. You just download their app, and then they send you a daily uh, email, kind of like BookBub. Yeah. And it will have the selections there. And they'll have the most recent. And then down at the bottom, you can uh, uh, click on this little button that takes you to more of their offerings. And they'll let you know if it's a limited time or not. And what I like is they let me know if I've already bought that book so I don't buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they have some classics. Um, I like them. I mean, for 99 oh, no. cents or $1.99 for, uh, right now I'm reading one at seven hours, but most of them are four and five hours long. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Because Amazon is a $15 commitment a month and it, that's a lot. Yeah. I think I did see where an audio book, which is Amazon's, they were reducing their monthly subscription but it's still a subscription yeah okay. and this one isn't okay thank you i don't care for audiobooks i have to read it we, uh, uh, the audiobooks doesn't do it for me i have to read the book i don't like to listen to it i don't i do them while i knit 
you know, instead of watching TV while I knit, I listen to a book while I knit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like That's them when, when I'm driving somewhere, you know, for a long time. Yeah. Kind of nice. I have to think when I drive now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah, well, we, we go on the back roads where there's like, we're the only car for hours. Oh. So. <laughs> well, um, and there's no, well, we have, we have that satellite radio, but you know, after a while that becomes tiresome. Yeah. So. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Right on that, I, I think we all liked Chris's idea of uh, December about a recipe. Um, yeah. A little yes. bit like that, so we could still yeah. get together and um, bring a glass of wine and a recipe and <laughs> here and have Merry Christmas. <laughs> And my thought, my thought too, is that even if you, I love to cook and I love to bake, but even if you don't, if all you have to bring is a recipe, you can just ask someone for a really good one mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. I like so to if see the recipes. Show it, you could do that. Um, and uh, let's see, what, who else? Uh, 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 when you said like you could share a poem a story or a memory also when you're giving your recipe? Yeah, something uh, that was appropriate to you personally or something from the holidays that would be appropriate, kind of a little anecdotal type thing that, you know, or, or a poem that maybe, um, I know we did poems a couple of years ago, but, um, or maybe more than that, I'm the years <laughs> old, blending together, who knows, but, um, you know, just something that is appropriate for the holiday season, since we're separate, let's try to at least bring something that'll bring us, you know, together that will make us laugh or think or, you know, whatever. The and case. we would all, we would Great idea. September meeting. I, I was supposed to, to wear our jammies. <laughs> <laughs> we I'll share that. In my house. How about if I host it in my house? <laughs> <laughs> Side right. Sixteenth, and it's the week before Christmas. So, of course, I guess nobody's going anywhere. I was going to my daughter's, but I don't know. <laughs> the The reports seem bleak all the time, so I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, well, nobody's canceling their pro. You know what they've been planning for years. But, what, Kathy? Yeah. Let me say, I just went to Sacramento and I flew on Southwest. And um, I know that right now they still have the middle seat open mm -hmm. and that will end as of November 30th. But I'll tell you, it was so well organized and I've never seen a cleaner airplane in my life yeah. or a cleaner I, airport. I flew south and south there's south. much less fewer people flying these days. Mm -hmm. So I felt very safe. Everybody had their mask on the entire time. Yeah. Um, you know, when we lined up to board, they had it. Well, they had us stay in our seats, and they called us by number, by like ten numbers at a time. And we came up, and they'd scan our boarding passes, and we got on. It, everything went very smoothly and very quickly. Uh, Kathy, did you feel you could social distance in the airport? Oh yeah. Oh, oh definitely. San, San Diego Airport you're only allowed to sit every other seat. They have, every other seat is marked off. You can't sit there. Sacramento airport where I flew to, they didn't have the seats marked, but it was not crowded at all. Yeah, you know? I flew in September and the airport out of um, Ontario and the airport was not crowded and it was a seat in between. And um, yeah, it was, it was really nice. And the clean, the air, airline was clean and everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you're doing a short trip, I would feel perfectly safe. I don't know about flying across country, but no. You know, yeah. Good for you. Lucky bum. <laughs> well, it was only an hour and a 10 hour and 10 minute flight. Yeah. Is, so our, brother, is that where your brother lives? Uh, my son. Oh, your son. Yeah. Yeah. So um, getting back to the book selection, if I might, uh, I think it was, was it Marsha? Well, I don't know who suggested we start in January, um, do the book selection at our December meeting, 
since okay. it's going to be out of the hat. Do we want to do that or do we want to wait till January? No, I think we, we could start a book in January instead of doing that in January, don't you think, Anne? What? Uh, we could start that was in suggestion January that, instead of. My suggestion was that we actually read a book in January. Right. Which would, That's which, uh, so does everybody want to send me a title of a book or? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we could start that. We can do it at our uh, December meeting and then have our first meeting in January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. usually our January meeting is where we yeah. get together and discuss the books and, and I know. Uh, yeah. that process. I, I don't know, Maggie, I don't want to change the the tradition how do you feel about that that's fine all right well we don't need to discuss them we'll just <laughs> we'll just uh suggest them and but could we it would be nice if um if somebody has read a book that they want to tell uh someone about uh couldn't we allow time for that at one of the meetings and they could just say that they have read a book and they'd like to tell everybody about it. And yeah. then, sure. As long as yeah. there's time, why not? Yeah. Would that work for you, Leslie, too? Then yeah. you, that's, that's fine. Yeah. And then you can present another book that you've read and that somebody else might want to read. And um, if they've already read it, it will create a discussion. One thing that came out of listening to um, Leslie Ann, sometimes during the course of a year before your month comes up, you change your mind. That happened to Leslie Ann this year. I think we should be able to change our minds and just say to the group, I don't think that's going to be a good choice. Here's what I'd like to propose instead. Um, oh. and, and let everybody know. Now, some people buy all, all, all the books at the beginning of the year, so that would throw them off. But yeah. I think we should be allowed to change our minds at our I age. I do too. I think it's a good suggestion. And the other thing I want to reassure Leslie Ann that you are very welcome in the group. Um, okay. I know I speak out too strongly about the idea that we should all have read the books. Um, that was my pledge to myself when I first joined the book club, and I, I treasure it. But that doesn't mean everybody has to do it. There's room in here for people who don't read all the books. That's always been true. Thank you. I hate to let you down if I don't. And, it, and, and the option is just not to be there. And that, that doesn't work for me either. But thank you, Ann. Yeah. No, you're always, you're always welcome. You always have something interesting to say. We value your opinion. <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> One, one thing before we go, um, I said, Roberta, uh, she did not come and uh, she sent me this. Uh, she said, I'm not sure I will be attending on Wednesday. My daughter is visiting and I have a doctor's appointment. Plus I only read 87 pages of the book and I'm not sure I will finish it. I did like what I read, except I skipped over the history sent by Major Carroll. I thought the writing beautiful, and the descriptions of the exotic part of the world intriguing, since it is so unfamiliar to me. I have traveled many parts of the world, but never considered going there. Hopefully you will be doing a video again so I can hear what others thought of it, Roberta. And yes, we are doing a video and she can see what we've, what we've done here. <laughs> right. Hmm. Hey, does anybody else have anything else to? No. 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 <laughs> hey, hey Jaylene. Uh, question: um, In December, will we decide who does January? Well, yeah, we'll have. Well, whatever whatever book is chosen, it would be their book. Yes, I guess. So you mean the first one you pick out will be January? Second will be February. Yeah. Or maybe we just have to pick what month we. <laughs> I cannot do January and February. I'm having oh. some surgeries, and uh, so I can't do those two. Oh. Okay. Why don't we include a note if there's some months we can't do? 
I'll oh, work with you, Lean, on when you pull idea. them the hat and then just putting a, count, a calendar right. together. Yeah, put it on your. Um, so include a note if you have couch. requests about when that to do it. That's great. But, Marsha, you'll be able to read the books? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my first audio book. Who knows? <laughs> well, happy Thanksgiving, I think. Yes, yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. All of you. Stay safe. Everybody stay safe, please. Good to see you yeah. all again. Stay safe. We're Thanks to, again, Daylene, for keeping us going. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yes. yes. Any phone call I just got? This what? is so funny. It's the Amazon delivery guy. <laughs> he said, I just got to tell you, I put your package over the wall and it smashed your cactus. He oh, said, I'm oh, so oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got it off the cactus and it's sitting on the rock now. Oh. But he said, I broke your cactus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? That's good. <laughs> yes, really. I is. told him, no problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go down to the gate and look at my smashed cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, have a happy Thanksgiving, you guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 -bye.